Hello everyone, very good morning and good evening and welcome to SAP Step Up Circles. So here, here we are here with another session and uh, uh, the people who are joining first time Step Up Circle, I will quickly uh, let you know that what is the Step Up Circle. So basically in the Step Up Circles, every week Thursday, we come together with some exciting topic to share knowledge with you. And uh, this week we have brought the topic, which is Coupa, Coupa Overview. Altogether, the topics we have covered so far is uh, from SAP side. Uh, it's the first time we are bringing a topic which is not from SAP side. It's, uh, Coupa is not an SAP product, but it's a big competitor of SAP. If, if you talk about uh, into the sourcing and procurement, especially in the sourcing, it is giving a very tough competitions uh, to Ariba in the market. And a lot of companies are there who have, who have switched uh, from Ariba to Coupa, which I know without telling the names. <laughs> so that's why we thought that it would be good. We have, we do a lot of sourcing and procurement trainings. So it would be good that we can also provide you the upcoming tools in the market. So that's where we come up with the overview session of Coupa today. So generally, uh, I covered a little bit of part. So our speaker today is Mr. Ajay, and he is having a very less time. He is uh, running short for our uh, next meeting. So I will not take much of the time and I will switch it over to Ajay, he will cover the quick Coupa overview. We will be dividing into the two sessions. Today we'll be having a quick overview and then we'll plan one more session where we'll be go a little bit more depth of the functionalities and the features of Coupa. So, uh, uh, so after that, the people who are looking for the career guidance, they can hold on once the Coupa session is done. I would be here to answer your career relevant related questions. So with that, we would be starting uh, 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 thank, uh, with Ajay. Uh, first of all, thank you, Ajay, for uh, coming up and giving us time. Before I put my gun to Ajay <laughs> and give it over to Ajay, uh, I will give you a quick uh, introduction about Ajay. So Ajay joined us recently, and he is doing uh, sourcing and procurement training with us. And during that discussion, I came across his enriched experience. And he's also having a lot of enriched experience in JD and Coupa. So Ajay belongs from India, uh, from Bhopal, and he has shifted uh, to US. And he's having overall 21 years of experience with JD. He has done 40 plus implementation in JD. He has five years, uh, more than five years of experience with Coupa. He has worked a lot on Coupa and JD integration. He has done three implementations in uh, Coupa. So earlier he has worked with the integration between Coupa and JDE. Now he's working with the integration between Coupa and SAP. That's why he joined our training of sourcing and procurement. So I thought that it would be great. He's, he's one of the guy which I know with the, one of the best knowledge in Coupa. So I thought if he can come across to our community and share the knowledge would be great. So Ajay, over to you. Good morning everyone. And thank you Parmender for the introduction. So, Without taking much of everybody's time, uh, I would like to say that, uh, you know, this is one of the things which I was put into the situation where, you know, I was always an Oracle consultant and never meant to go into this field, but somehow it showed up and uh, I became a part of it and learned it. And I would love to share this experience with you. Um, before we start anything, the things that I'm going to share with you, uh, some of the things Okay, these are from the training environment. They are not client specific. They are not industry specific um, due to certain, what you call as regulatory restrictions and um, non-confidential agreement. I might be not able to answer some questions, but I will try to answer. So these things are very generic, just to give you an idea about how things are. And you know, as a functional consultant, what you can expect out of this. So uh, let me share my screen. Let me put a disclaimer, whatever the things Ajay is sharing is best of his personal knowledge and personal experience. Thank you, Ajay, please go ahead. Yeah. So let me know if you guys see my screen. No, not yet, Ajay. It is sharing now, now we can see it, yes. Okay, so I'm gonna start with Coupa, right? Um, Coupa, um, what is Coupa, right? And, and before we go into that, uh, I just give you a little bit of overview of like, in most of the companies in today's market, right? Uh, the sourcing and procurement is you know, achieved through phone calls, emails, or physical mail. 
right? Um, orders are communicated manually through suppliers. Somebody's on the phone, somebody is checking email, somebody is checking some other system for pricing or checking their emails uh, or checking their text messages. Hey, what was the last price? And even checking their ERP systems, right? Um, but why Coupa, right? And why is it giving such a tough competition to SAP or EBA, right? First of all, it's a single and automated source of purchasing, okay? And we will go into the little bit of purchasing, meaning what kind of purchasing? You know, it's it's mainly used for indirect purchasing. Um, you can standardize the whole global processes around sourcing and procurement. And uh, the, the best part about this is, uh, it is one of the softwares where it doesn't matter whether you are on a laptop or a desktop or cloud or your mobile phone or a tablet. The timely communication you know, is the key here. People can do anything anywhere and that's the best part of it. I work with Oracle, I work with SAP and I know how cumbersome these systems are, uh, especially in terms of processing, in terms of complexity, but Coupa just broke those barriers. And, and you know that's why it is becoming so popular in the market, right? So um, <clears throat> basically what is Coupa? It's a cloud-based e-procurement platform, right? So you can see from the picture that basically it's a cloud-based software. There is no fat client. There is no what you call as client server. You simply log on to internet, right? Um, I'm not going to go into the part of hosting, like it's a private cloud or virtual, you know, public cloud or a hybrid cloud. Those are the architecture decisions. But all you need to understand is that all the applications pretty much can be accessed on internet. And which applications are we talking about? We are talking about sourcing. We are talking about contract management. We're talking about supply chain design and planning. And we are talking about the main is procure to pay. Now, Coupa says supply chain design and planning, but really Coupa was never meant to be a supply chain company. They acquired one company in the last few years, but really what we are going to focus today is sourcing and uh, procurement and, and especially the sourcing, but I will leave for the next session. Um, but the biggest modules here you see are uh, supplier management, SIM, uh, sourcing, you know, where the bidding process happens for the vendors, selecting the best vendors, um, contract management and uh, P2P process, right? Now, what does Coupa stand for? A lot of people think that, <laughs> that Coupa is just an acronym, but really it stands for something. And uh, it stands for, C stands for comprehensive, right? And when they say comprehensive, they really mean to say that they cover um, invoicing, expenses, procurement, whole processes like sourcing, contract management, supplier management, analytics also, right? Uh, so that's what comprehensive stands for. Open, right? O. Um, initially, I thought that open stands for more like an open architecture, but really, uh, the more I understand about the company, uh, the word open means here is like openness, transparency, and they are really, they do believe in, in authenticity among their customers, employees, and partners. I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's amazing that I have never found companies with, with that kind of uh, what you call as cultural values. I have been in the industry for 21 years, but really the company is very open in terms of their communication and, and in terms of their transparency. Uh, User-centric, you, right? Um, so, once we start going into the slide more, you will see that how this software is designed for user and user only. And there is a saying in Coupa industry is that the best UI is no UI, meaning that you will see the UIs and you would be amazed that how come other ERP vendors cannot think about it for last 20 years or 30 years, right? Um, prescriptive, why the word prescriptive? Well, because Coupa is a cloud-based platform and it has a lot of customers and a lot of suppliers, and they have a visibility into the patterns of the industry uh, when it comes to any industry or uh, Ajay, your voice is lost. Can you hear me now? Yeah, we can hear. Maybe the mic went away, I think. Yeah. Yeah. The sourcing, uh, they have a very depth into insight into every industry that is out there. 
So they actually, once you start using Coupa, within a month or two, depending upon which modules you implemented, you can see that you know the suggestions start to appear that hey, you can save you know forty thousand dollars by implementing that because your competitors are doing that, or you can save this by paying this much in time, things like that. And A stands for accelerated because the implementation can really be done in 12 to 16 weeks. Now, that's what Coupa stands for, right? And how does this cloud-based e-procurement platform fit in the bigger picture? I'm sorry about that, just one minute. <clears throat> so you can clearly see here that Coupa has all its applications, right? But in the end, it does depend upon financials with for SAP or Oracle or any ERP like Microsoft Dynamics, NetSuite, um, Workday, all cloud-based. And you can see on the top that uh, you can access the system through mobile devices, tablets, or your computers. Um, just on the right side, uh, they have almost like $3 trillion spent under management because they know how much companies are spending on indirect procurement. Um, they have 2,100 customers right now. This is from the last year. So uh, they, are, they have the best in class platform for the business spend management and 7 million suppliers, right? Um, the Coupa has a very high rate of international adoption because as I said, uh, the system can be implemented within eight to 12 weeks. Um, Let's go to the next one. So what are the benefits of Coupa, right? Uh, the benefits of Coupa are one-stop shop. It's a single place for all the users, buyers, and suppliers. The ease of navigation is the biggest point, and all the processes are automated and streamlined. It means there are no manual processes. And, and you will see what I'm talking about as we go with the slides. Okay. so. There are four types of people who are involved in procure to pay process, right? The people and people you are doing the SAP training, they know that there are requesters who says we need something, right? Requisitions, who are responsible for creating requisitions. Um, and then there are people who approve those requisitions. We know that from the SAP, we, we all are going through the training, right? And then there are suppliers, right? Who will receive the purchase orders. And then there's an accounts payable department, which is involved in paying for the invoices once the goods are received. So in general, there are four types of people who are involved in these processes. Um, Coupa introduced a new role called buyer. Um, that role actually comes into picture when the requesters request something, and then it goes towards, uh, it has been approved, but yet the PO has not been cut. And, and the buyers actually are responsible for fixing some, you know, double checking the requisition or the POs or the errors or, or whatever it is um, that they would like to fix, right? Uh, but those are the people who are mainly involved in this uh, Coupa world. Okay, so before we go any further, what kind of services Coupa manage in an organization, right? And, and here I would like you to just think uh, of a company that has maybe 10,000 employees or sometimes 50,000 employees and they like to buy uh, you know, services, right? Um, so if you have 50,000 employees in your company, when they join, they need laptop, they need a charger, they need uh, a, you know, uh, office supplies, they need um, you know, things for their cubicle, um, well, you have a marketing department, they need services, they need time to time, you know, things. Um, and then you have, you know, Coupa is also used for, you have building facility management, which, you know, provides um, services within the building where there is no PO involved, but, you know, you, you pay for all the janitorial services, you pay for rent, um, you know, you have legal services through your company. Translation services means if you are operating in different parts of the world and you have documents that need to be translated, uh, temporary labors which you hire. So those kind of things. And the disclaimer says it really is not used for managed inventory, okay? So if you are involved in manufacturing, 
And if you are involved in raw material and, and the production of finished good, Coupa is not involved in that part, okay? So, so that is a very important distinction that everybody needs to understand. Only indirect procurement, all right? Okay, so what a typical P2P cycle looks like in Coupa, right? Just like SAP, you know, you create and submit a requisition, all right? Then somebody is gonna approve a requisition, why? Well, because in most companies, um, there is something called self-approval limit. For example, um, you know, if you have like 50,000 employees and they would like to buy something up to $100, you don't impose an approval. But if somebody wants to buy a laptop for themselves or a third laptop or a fourth laptop, you would say, no, you know, I would not let people buy about $200 or $500, depending upon how you see. So there are people who approve that requisition, right? And once the requisition is approved, that requisition turned into a purchase order, right? And that purchase order is issued to a supplier, which of course, once it re he receives or she receives the supplier, you know, the purchase order, um, you know, they work on it and they deliver the goods and upon the goods received, you do the invoice creation and payment. So typical P2B cycle of any ERP, Oracle or SAP, uh, nothing, um, you know, different here. But what is different is this that there are four ways to buy things in Cuba, right? And uh, well, people say, well, well why four ways? And, and you will see why when I share the screen further. But really, you can search for items in Cuba, which we call as catalog, right? Because they have been cataloged by the company. Now there is something called shop online, which is a punch out catalog, meaning that you can, if, if you don't, your company does not have that item in its own catalog, you can actually go and shop online. And what happens is that you like something, you select it, uh, the punch out catalog only appears for you because your company approved it. And then you just add it to your cart and bring it back. And, and just like any other shopping experience on Amazon or any site that you use, it's, it's no different. It's called punch out catalogs. <laughs> A um, couple of times, you know, you need uh, web forms. Why do we need web forms? Because uh, you need um, services, right? For example, you need to hire three people to work on the garden or, or office, office cafeteria. Um, you want to hire them. So there is a form that you need to fill up. And then if your request does not fall into any of those three categories, there is something called a free form. You can actually just write the requisition and it will go. Okay, so this screen is, is very interesting, right? When the user logs in to Cooper for the first time and for the sake of discussion, Sam, what does he see? Well, he sees just one thing only like Google or Amazon. What do you need? Okay, so this usually is the workbench of Sam, who is a user, right? He also sees, you know, what kind of, you know, orders he has created, what were the requisitions, what were that were approved and turned into a PO in the recent activity, right? He, he, he does see that. And this thing here says action is what needs to be done to these POs, right? Um, here, in the to-do section, Sam will see what he has to do. Like if, if there are goods out there which have been received, he has to create an invoice or many things like, or he has like, depending upon his role, he has to approve things, okay? And then uh, remember I talked to you about, uh, I think I need to just one minute additional stores, right? So for example, if you don't find anything that your company needs, right? Or, or you're searching for a special kind of a charger, laptop charger, which your company does not have in the catalog. Well, you can go and search, you know, that type of charger in Office Depot or Dell or CDW um, because these are the punch out catalogs which are approved by your company, right? And there's an integration. I'll talk about it later. But the shopping experience is very simple. Like, what do you need? Just type it here, okay? 
And then we'll talk about these things also, you know, what are our forms. Order list is basically just like your, your SAP source list, I believe, where you order repeated items again and again. These are your catalogs, which the company maintain. You know, these are the commodity items, which you, know, you can shop regularly. These are the policies where um, employees who are buying are aware of what up to what dollar amount they can buy certain things, what are allowed by the company, what are not allowed by the company. And uh, these are the free forms, which I talked about. Like if you don't find something, you can just, you know, access the form. Um, and you can see cart here. So it's like, you know, when you log on to Amazon for the first time or, you know, any site that you guys shop, you know, it asks you, what do you need? Well, you know, you just type it here, right? So this is what the user see when the user logs into Coupa for the first time, right? And we are talking about, depending on if you're an end user, right? You might not see this one, recent activity, because you are not responsible for approving and you're not responsible for creating a PO. So those are the roles. And this thing will not appear for the end user. Okay. This Sam is happens to be a person who is responsible for approving things and creating PO's. So he sees that, you know, there is a decent activity going on here. And I purposely put this screen, but if you're an end user, all you see is this one, you know, what do you need? Okay, and you might see this one also, which is additional stores where you can shop. That's it, because you're shopping, right? You don't need to do anything else. Um, this one here is also where your company announcements happen, right? If your company has something going on, uh, which they need to inform to everyone, every Coupa user, this is a kind of a running bar where the messages appear from time to time right depending upon what you want to communicate or your company wants you to check out something which is cool you know you can come here whenever you log in right and one more thing as i said to you that if you do not find anything you just click on this button called write a request that's it other erps do not have this kind of functionality for example in in sap in oracle if we don't find an item we are stuck right there like we cannot even move from there. Now, users don't need to worry about it, right? Remember, in the beginning, I said no UI is the best UI. The user only sees one thing and one thing only. What do you need? Okay, let's move on to the next one. So when the user search something, the results appear like this. You know, maybe this, you know, the user search for some electronics and the result appears saying that, hey, you know, here is the result document scanner or a, you know, ThinkPad keypad. And all the user has to do is basically click on add to cart. That's it. This is the end user experience. What do you need? Add to cart, okay? And this is a sidebar, which shows you that how many suppliers actually, you know, you, you can shop with, you know, two suppliers carry whatever you need. And, and, you know, the commodity which you're searching actually follow into this commodity code you know, peripherals, um, two, two of them are available, right? Um, and then what the user does, user say check out. Okay, when the user click on check out, this is the screen which the user sees. So what does it have? It has a ship to, okay, where the user wants that goods to be delivered, right? Who created this requisition? What are the items? Items do come up with their picture, their description, their commodity code. Why commodity? Because commodity is tied to what you call as GL class codes. GL class codes are tied to billing. And, and this information on the right is totally ERP driven, totally ERP. Whether you're using Oracle ERP or SAP ERP, uh, it all comes from. Uh, and of course, the Coupa GL chart of accounts is always mirrored like your ERP chart of accounts. Right. And that's it. And you say, okay, done. That's the shopping experience of a user in Coupa. Now, there is a lot of complexity behind the scenes when it comes to vendors, right? Just like the vendor master data, there is a lot of complexity behind the scenes in terms of item, their commodities. But all that complexity is hidden from the end user, 
ओके और एज अ मैटर ऑफ फैक्ट फ्रॉम द कंसल्टेंट ऑल्सो अनलेस एंड एंटिल यू हैपन टू बी फंक्शनल कंसल्टेंट हु इज सेटिंग अप द सिस्टम वंस दिस बिलिंग टर्न्स ग्रीन it means that even the accounts payable department does not need to be involved it is done they you have the blessing of even the accounts payable department at this point of time all the way till invoicing so this is a very powerful thing right uh, you can add a new line you can clear the card items but this is the shopping experience of a user which is very hard to imagine if you are using any erp like oracle or sap right because we have so much setup we have so many screens transactions code and and um, mandatory fields nothing like that you know what do you need i like this one add to the cart check out now that's why kuba is so so amazing um, we will talk about the more you know setup about you know where these items are coming from what does this chart of accounts look like Uh, how the suppliers are being managed and shipped to addresses and remit to addresses um you know and um, uh the user roles right but those are two totally different topics the user experience which we are talking about is 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 this one right if these are commodity items user found them and user added to the cart and they check it out all right here is the total that is being displayed um it will not let you check out if you do not have the blessing of the financial department you know it is already built it knows which accounts to go to this is coming from erp systems okay uh, just to let you know guys that users once they place an order they can see where do they spend the money you know what kind of requisitions are out there and you can see it's very very intuitive right this is a requisition number right there are certain actions which they can take they can edit the requisition if it has not been approved you know they can email it um, they can reverse it they sign as reverse and um, it shows them how much total have they spent so far the items are here and different statuses draft means the user has not submitted it these two are pending approval here right this one has been received so the user really knows at this point of time that he has to go and receive it no other screens i mean this is the beauty of this part is like they can see all their requisitions here pos here receipts here and invoices here and they it, it is very very intuitive now now i moved on from what you call as the end user to somebody who works in the company and who manages requisitions or who manages pos right they can see everything here and of course i'll take the questions later but let's go to the show the next form okay what are web forms i told you guys that if you want to create a requisition right and let's say you do not for example you need a business card right now for a business card what you need you really need is i need it by this date which is next week this is my name this is my title and uh, this is what i want to be printed right you don't need a supplier for that and as a matter of fact the supplier have already been finalized so this is called a web form meaning that when you type business card in what do you need this form will appear for you and you just fill up the basic information what you want to be printed on the business card and you can place a requisition all right we are still on the topic of requisition not the approvals not the pos right because once the requisition goes through the rest of the process in coupa is just clicking the button just clicking the button and you will see how and why because all the validation has already been done at this point okay all the validation has ha happened here uh, so let me go and talk about punch out right what is a punch out we if you happen to not find what you're looking for right you can go and click on dell cdw or any other website which your company has selected and you can shop there and whatever item you like when you click it to the cart it will actually bring that item from that website back to the cart your cart in coupa okay so that's a very powerful feature it's called punch out catalog it requires some kind of integration with the supplier website and we'll talk about that in the next one but you are not restricted to the company catalog items you can actually shop outside of your system uh, in in big suppliers and these 
companies like Dell, CDW, Office Depot have catalogs out there for every company that they can hook onto. Last but not the least is the free form, right? If, if you do not know, cannot find anything, just tell me what you need, whether you need two quantity, five quantity, or if it's amount based, just tell me what commodity you need, okay? And then, you know, you don't need to fill up these things, add to cart and check out. So from the end user perspective, you cannot get stuck at any given point of time, all right? And uh, before we go, I just want to show you what suppliers see on their side when they get the POs, right? When supplier log in, they see, you know, uh, on their side, how many customers they are connected to, how many users are in the system, you know, how many legal entities are there. They have access to all their orders. They have access to um, all their invoices. And are they compliant with the policies of their customers or not? So this is how the supplier portal looks like. And uh, I'm going to stop here today because I'll cover the most of the topics next time in great detail. But once you understand the requisition part, the approvals and the PO and the invoicing and good receipts are very easy. Um, but this is what Coupa is. And, and uh, there is complexity which is behind the scenes. But uh, now compared with the SAP system, <laughs> which you guys are learning, or I compare it with the Oracle system, which I learned in the last 20 years, and I find it amazing to use and so easy. But the real work is in the integrations. So at this point of time, I'll open for questions. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Ajay. No UI is the best UI. I really love that statement. <laughs> <laughs> so really, but, yeah, this... yeah Parminder, you can see that how easy it is, right? From the end user perspective. I mean, considering we all are coming from ERP backgrounds, that why this, this software is, is gaining so much traction. And, and one of the things I would like to tell people that if your company manages to have like 30,000 suppliers, well, uh, for 40,000 suppliers, uh, Coupa does the supplier onboarding for free, uh, whereas Ariba charges customers to come on board. So, so suppliers actually do come on board for free when you implement Coupa. Great, great. Thanks for, thank you for telling this. I will go and register my company there. <laughs> 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 so, so I'm open for questions if, you, if anybody has questions. So before we jump to the question, let me check, Ajay, uh, how long you have for questions? How many more minutes do we have? 10 minutes. Okay, 10 minutes. Thank you for that. Yes. So uh, Ajay, it was a great session. I really loved it. Uh, crisp and clear. So people, the another functionalities will be covering every Thursday we do the session, but it would not be the next Thursday, the Coupa will identify a slot for Coupa again. And maybe the next month we'll do one more session where we'll go into the deep of the uh, function of features. Okay, so before we go to the questions which people have, so Ajay, I have uh, uh, one question. So yes. it's good that it's from the front end, it's simplified, and you said that uh, uh, the complex complexity should be there at the back end. That's very right. But when the, uh, the it comes to the to change the system, to change the screens, or to change the process flow, standard process flow or Coupa, uh, how flexible Coupa is? Can it can it be changed as per the customer requirements? Oh yeah, yeah, it is very flexible. So just like any ERP, right? You have the base tables, right? Like your supplier, your commodities, your items. And uh, what Coupa has done is they have done a provision for like 20 or I think it's 20 or 25 in the last release called something a concept of custom fields, right? Mm -hmm. now, now these are dynamic fields which can be added to any table in real time. Right. So if you are, you, are, you say this, hey, the item table is missing these attributes, which are very specific to my industry. Well, just create custom fields and, uh, you know, roll it out to your users. And, and that changes can be done within two days or three days. You know, it's very flexible in terms of rolling out changes. Um, I have seen that uh, where the Coupa is being managed, only a handful of people, like two or three people can manage uh, the whole company where, where there are like 30,000 employees or 40,000 employees. That's great. It's so, so flexible, yeah. Do, do it have a concept of development system, quality system, production system, or straight away these custom fields can be changed in production? System? No, they do have a concept of same development, QA, and prod. They do. Okay. okay. Because really, at, at this point of time, you also need to understand whenever you do some custom fields and anything, 
you have to check end to end process because you know you are relying on your integrations right you you don't want to make sure that you don't break your integration with your you know you must be receiving item feed every day you must be receiving new customers every day from some erp and and you are relying on um you know accounts payable for you know invoice information and and payment information that is coming from erp coupa does not pay they have a system called uh, coupa pay but i have not seen any companies using it uh, all the companies rely on back end erp okay okay great great to know so, so yeah, when you do the development you have to go through exactly same cycle development qa and prod okay so when i was seeing this uh, requisition part so this is exactly what sap is also trying to do i think if you are in our uh, excellence training please try to go to that uh, uh, self service uh, procurement chapter that is what exactly sap is trying to bring in s4 hana and the flow is exactly same then i am thinking okay from where the concepts are coming probably that your voice was breaking up uh, so, uh, sorry is is it clear now Uh, guys are you able to hear me now now we can hear you but before whatever you said we totally lost you <laughs> yeah yeah so what i was saying that uh, in our excellence training try to go through that chapter of self service procurement and then also we can compare uh, this with the s4 hana so that is a new thing as uh, sap is coming with s4 hana self service procurement to me it looks like a lot of things are there which you have mentioned there they have also tried to put it there to simplify the requisition process for end user that's great yeah yeah okay let let's go quickly with the with the questions will people have samir has a question can we can we do some budget controls oh yes coupa does have a full functionality for budgeting so when you select something right as a end user you know you might not see it but when the it goes to the approver approver can actually see how much you know if the budget functionality is turned on how much budget do they have left or is it going against the budget so yes your purchases can be tied to the budgets great great so that state of your functionality is not there in sap so that's very good to know uh, jignesh has a question comparison of ariba uh, comparison with ariba so jignesh will come on that later that would be a big topic i would like to cover it but uh, we would be covering later where we can compare ariba and uh, coupa uh, manojit has a question is coupa is capable of ai ai i think artificial intelligence Yes, uh, we will go into that. Uh, you know, when I will show you guys the predictive analysis and spending analysis. I mean, guys, th th remember the company has visibility to three trillion dollars that is being spent, right? They must be using. They are using actually artificial intelligence tools to you know tell every client what their competitors are doing in the industry, how they can save money, how can they 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 be more competitive. Um, uh, the clients that I worked with actually, as a matter of fact, saved. uh last client saved almost 200 million dollars within 3 years because now they have visibility into everything that they are buying and they have visibility into you know what kind of savings can they utilize so yes artificial intelligence is a part of coupa predictive too great 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 bala has a question are, are we providing coupa training as of now we are not providing we are just creating awareness we'll let you know if in future we come up with that Arijit has another question. Can these changes be only achieved by enhanced requests to Coupa engineers, or technical consultants can do that? I think this is a question where we were having a discussion how flexible it is. So the technical right. consultants. So Coupa do does not have technical development at all. It's mostly for functional consultants. It's like everything is coming in um, ready for functional consultants to do things like changing the table layouts. changing the screen layout changing the form layout uh, providing the reports all the all all the things can be done by what you call as a functional user uh, that's why the 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 tool set is so powerful that uh, i have not seen anybody in the technical capacity in any implementation because it is very simple to use and the tool set is very powerful that even a functional consultant can change the table can change the form layout can change the report layout great 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 to know that jignesh has a question the coupa is for upstream uh, or only for da downstream uh, can you explain what upstream and downstream i think the upstream is the part sourcing part where basically we go to the vendors we connect to the vendors and uh, rfq quotations part that is the upstream part 
the downstream part is you know generally we say that ariba is more used for the sourcing so you can say the sourcing is the upstream part and oh, the normal oh, I, I understand is the okay. downstream part oh kuba is actually for both it has a very powerful feature for sourcing uh, you know perspective it has a process called bidding it has a process for full functionality for sourcing is there in kuba and um, a lot of companies i have seen using that functionality uh, in terms of managing an event uh, in, inviting suppliers for providing the bids uh, finalizing their bids finalizing the event and declaring the winner and finalizing so and as a matter of fact you can do it from the equation itself if the equation is big enough you can you know introduce the bid part so it is a full fully aware with of of sourcing thing it it works very well with sourcing it works fully on the upstream and downstream and it also has a contract management part as well okay so itself it's a complete procurement tool uh, yes. can we run without any erp system any another erp system can can we run with standalone by using financial functions of coupa um yeah if you implement coupa pay but still you would be running into the issues like um uh how to i mean you can pay somebody but you know as i said if you are familiar with any typical erp uh you have ap ar and gl right so yeah. the functionality on the pay side is very limited i mean you can pay somebody right uh, but at the same time how will it fit into your overall uh general ledger for the company you know you you have to do some kind of a um extraction out of the coupa system to report your company financials right um that kind of functionality because remember purchasing is a very small part of the overall operations of the company so if you running it stand alone yes you can pay somebody okay using coupa but uh, i have not seen people doing that it is always tied to the back end erp because your company has much bigger operations going on in terms of ap ar gl and and coupa is a very small picture into that part of ap yeah that's exactly answer my question so it's uh... exactly similar as ariba we ariba also we need to implement it with some core erp system to utilize uh, the best to to make it the things end to end digital okay that's good so we have uh, one more minute so i will take the questions which is coming up the couple of questions i will take more uh, bengtesh is asking uh, uh, ajay do you know that uh, which uh, uh, database it is using what kind of database or what kind of language it is built on i don't know much about it but i can find that out all i know is that when you use punch outs it uses some kind of technology called cxml mm-hmm. uh, which when it ties to other people's website other clients website uh, like dell computer cdw it's a, it's a complex architecture uh, but i can find that out you know um, i i can find that out what kind of database as i said it's a cloud based platform really you don't need to know anything you just log in and and uh, when companies start implementing it it takes even with the changes and everything it takes almost like 12 to 16 weeks to just get done end to end so really the simplification part as i said you know every table comes with 20 custom fields add it whatever you need for reporting whatever you add in the requisition you know let's say some kind of a tag that you want to carry all the way to invoice or to ap well get you know it can automatically add that custom field into five different tables at the same time now that kind of flexibility are we talking about that you just click a button and say i put this information in the requisition let it flow automatically to approval to po to goods receipt and to ap and and whatever tag that you have provided there will will be available in in all the tables in all the forms automatically now i can find that out what kind of technology are they using behind the scenes okay okay sure so i would be ending with this uh... uh final question uh, bala has very good question you started the, the, it that uh, that coupa is used for indirect procurement so the question is whether it can be used for the direct procurement also and do it has a, a approval workflows so two questions are combined yes so um, i'm going to answer that. it has a very powerful feature for approval workflows and we will go through approvals next week uh, the approval is actually one of the best part of coupa which is you can have custom approvals and you have something called managerial uh, automatic approvals and and I'll talk more about them you know and they are very easy to implement so approvals is a very big functionality in coupa automatically happening from any device any time anywhere 
you can approve things, you know? So the managers on the run have a great flexibility with their cell phones, with their tablets and with their laptops to approve things. And I'll, I'll go over that. Can it be used for direct procurement? Well, the problem with comes when you involve raw material and finished goods and manufacturing, right? Because, so let me give you a simple example. Um, once the raw material is involved, you know, you, you have some kind of item ledger, right? In Coupa, in SAP, we have material ledger. In Oracle, we have item ledger. Um, the, what if you do not receive, um, you know, full quantity, you know, or your financials have been updated? What I'm trying to say is direct procurement, I have not seen clients doing it because the direct procurement involves so much complexity from other processes, right? And uh, there is much more going on in the direct procurement as opposed to indirect. See, these are the items which you use, you know, uh, for your employees, for your company, uh, you know, um, they are not involved in any end-to-end -end process. They, they are not involved in manufacturing. They're not involved in the formation of sub-assemblies. So it's very easy to do some kind of reversal, but the moment you involve the raw material and you have to reverse something, it's a very difficult. I mean, try to reverse a transaction in, in, in SAP in material ledger uh, or in Oracle in item ledger, you know? So, so yeah. It's, it's not possible, right? Or it is possible, but that requires a lot of, so I have not seen any company using Coupa, um, but I heard that they acquired a company uh, in the last two years um, and they are working on uh, bringing the functionality for, uh, you know, supply chain related, like, you know, inventory goods. But, I, but most of the time I have seen so far in the last five years, every company using it for indirect. Okay, great, great. Thank you. Thank you, Ajay, for answering all these questions. And this is uh, truly a very great session. I, I really enjoyed it. I hope the people at other end also has enjoyed it. I have a long list of questions which people have put, but I know that you need to go ahead for your meeting. So we yeah. will we'll not take down that questions and guys we will try to answer in our next Coupa session. Yes. So please uh, be with us. Uh, uh, next week, I we would be trying to cover SAP PPPI, and then we'll try to bring IBP. And then again, next month, I will bring Ajay again to go ahead with more things in Coupa. But uh, thank you, thank you very much, Ajay, for today's session. Thank you, thank you, everyone. Have a good day. Thank you, thank you, bye-bye.